This mid 20th century industrial landscape around Manchester is painted by L.S. Lowry and reflects industry dominating the lives of people and the landscape and also reflects huge political and economic power that continues to be wielded with new industries in a changing landscape. This contemporary photograph by Edward Batinsky shows contemporary industry here in China of a vast scale and something we are all familiar with, an overhead view of a kind of spaghetti junction in California, with Batinsky focusing on the scale of how we are changing the planet, the human presence signified by the vehicles travelling at high speed. Here, Richard Diebenkorn uses paint and colour to make marks that show the energy of the human hand and the human mind in a personal space, a studio with a distant view of buildings. The use of paint and colour humanises the image. In this painting, Diebenkorn has continued to explore shapes and colours towards an edited abstraction of an observed scene. All art is abstract, made of shapes, colours, lines and so on, selected from things seen in the world. And, now, and no matter how abstracted, it makes you think of things seen and felt in the world. Lena Bobardi, an architect, designed this house for herself, called the Glass House in 1951, on the outskirts between Sao Paulo and the jungle, a man-made object made of steel and glass in a relationship with nature, a kind of urban pastoral. The area the house is in is now part of the growing city's suburbs. Today, half the population of the world lives in cities, some newly built, others grown over time. People crave a relationship with nature, even if it is just a pot plant indoors. This painting by Jasmine Creed is called Underworld, showing natural forms, lily pads in a space with graffiti, the sign of human creativity, with figures painted much smaller in a far corner. Again, a contrast between the natural and the man-made in the form of graffiti. As with the lily pads, Graffiti changes over time, gets worn away or overlaid by other graffiti or is painted over in layers echoing human presence. Here in Coronite, Jasmine Creed has painted the effects of COVID-19 in the industrialised landscape of Halifax. It shows women of South Asian background huddled together wearing masks with a sculptural monument of typical European style next to an empty space in front of the Peace Hall, once a textile manufacturing site and now a museum. The way it is painted shows empathy for the people and the situation. Jenny Holzer uses text to make powerful political interventions in real spaces, as in New York here. Again, there is empathy for the predicaments of people within an industrialised and commercial space. Also in this powerful image with dramatic lighting, Jenny Holtz's truisms such as abuse of power comes, comes as no surprise and protect me from what I want have appeared on posters, billboards and even condoms and as LED signs and monumental light projections. She questions consumerism or makes personal emotional messages to do with things such as death and love. The texts can look like advertising, but, but do provoke critical thinking. She often uses political slogans on T-shirts in her Truisms T-shirts from 1980 onwards. They are a means of empowerment as worn here by a woman, a lone figure surrounded by objects. In my painting here off Oxford Road train station in Manchester, there is a woman in the centre, also a lone figure, a scene of the everyday, with people here separate in their own worlds, waiting for a train. This painting is a few years old. 
Thanks to Turning Point School of Art, I have remembered it and look forward to picking up this subject matter again.